Distinguished guests, please take your seats and silence your electronic devices. The commencement ceremony will begin momentarily. Please stand if you are able to welcome the graduates of the class of 2022 from the College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific Northwest.
distinguished guests one more round of applause for the class of 2022. Please be seated. difficult two years, but within and coming out of this negative experience is a very positive. This, this class, amongst all of our colleges, watched healthcare change over the last three to five years, and now they're becoming part of the change and, and will be part of uh, shaping where healthcare goes in the future. They embody communication, transparency, trust, integrity, character. And all of that is wrapped into humanism and empathy. One of the beautiful things about Western U is all of the colleges have always stood together shoulder to shoulder. It's a common theme that runs through our students and through the university. We already stood by each other from discipline to discipline, from college to college. I think that's always been one of the very special things about Western U and our Western U community and our Western U family. Dean Satterfield, the College of Podiatric Medicine. You can't put off uh, until tomorrow what you really want, or you'll be on the other end of, of 20 or 30 years saying, gee, I wish I should, I, and I should have done X. Don't let there be Xs in your life. Don't give up on your life's goals and plans, uh, or else medicine will just eat you alive, and you want to retain who you are. the College of Veterinary Medicine. And we're in total admiration that they made it through challenges that no other class has ever had to make it through. Our challenge now is to recapture that culture as alumni, and, and we're looking forward to that. Never back up. Remember that you are tomorrow's leaders. Live up to that expectation. College of Graduate Nursing. The class of 2022 is one of the most adaptable classes that I've seen so far. This class has witnessed some of the most remarkable healthcare challenges of any class that I've seen in years. Some of the challenges that they've had are to take care of some of the sickest patients we've had in decades. And they've done it with grace, with style, and with confidence. Our big thing as team is to I think that the class of 2022 really learned how important each class member is to each other. Dean Prabhu, the College of Pharmacy. And a class of 20 and 2020 and class 2021, sadly, did not walk across the stage to pick their diploma, so I'm very grateful that we are in that situation where we can actually see them face to face and give them their highest honor. Suddenly from the sidelines, uh, um, my student pops up and he's getting ready to administer the shot uh, to me. And I was overjoyed to see that. I'm excited for the class of 2022 because 
they are going out into the world as competent healthcare professionals representing Western New. They made it. Dean Friedrichsen, the College of Dental Medicine. The class of 2022 has exhibited amazing resilience and patience as they've gone through the entire clinical education during the pandemic. Usually we like things fairly regimented and consistent from patient to patient, from procedure to procedure. And we learned that, you know, as far as the protocols and how we approach things, we had to be flexible in order to be able to continue to provide the patient care that we wanted to forward together. Thank them for their resilience and for their patience. Acting Dean Henson, the Graduate College of Biomedical Sciences. It's easy to slip into a mindset that I call the imposter syndrome. This idea that great things, exciting futures, are for somebody else. And the reality is that um, you've already demonstrated that you belong. You've already demonstrated that you have a future. These students have shown that you cannot easily extinguish a fighting spirit. As long as that spirit continues to endure, um, I think that we have a lot to look forward to in society if, if, if we have more people out there uh, like the class of 2022. This class has shown great heart and great perseverance, uh, and I'm, I couldn't be happier for all of them. Acting Dean Conant, the College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific and Comp Northwest. Time is the most valuable asset that you can have, and that what you need to understand that even though you'll be working extremely hard, long hours in residency, need to start making time for yourself, for your family, and your friends. You'll be spending many long hours treating patients, saving lives in the next three to five years of your training. Your time must be split between work and have a great work-life balance. This class, because of what they've had to endure, are going to be much stronger and able to adapt in the future for any adversity that is brought before them. Dean Schilling, the College of Health Sciences. The, the class 22, their futures are so bright. They've learned how to pivot. They've learned how to be innovative and they are prepared for whatever medicine um, or disease presents and they have the skill set by which to attack that with veracity, hope, and knowledge. I am thankful to this class for making every one of us better educators, making us better humans, and making us better as a profession for what they have brought out in all of us, what they have asked of us, and what they have shown us has helped all of us grow every day. I would leave this class with the three things that I asked them to capture when they came, and that is to remain resilient, to remain reflective, and to remain resourceful. And above all, always remain humble. We are here to serve. College of Optometry. Class of 2022, you helped us learn, you helped us imagine a new way of delivering the highest quality education. And I want to thank you for your participation as an equal partner in getting through this challenging time together. The class of 2022 has an amazingly bright future. They have the best of the high tech world the high touch world and the Western new core values behind them for science, caring and humanism. I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sticking with us, being our partners in navigating this time together to make sure that you've achieved your personal and professional dreams. Thank you.
what they've accomplished is unprecedented. And these letters reflect and embody the commitment that they have to the university, to their patients, to their families, to their careers, to their future. And we are honored to be a part of it. President Farias Eisner, this is our letter. Yes. For me, E stands for everyone matters. I love that. And the empathy which they themselves embody. To the future. To the future and Godspeed. Invite our guests who are able to please rise now and meet the people who have guided your loved one on their journey through Western U, the faculty, administration, board of trustees, and deans. Distinguished guest, the president of Western University of Health Sciences, Dr. Robin Farias Eisner. For those who are able, please remain standing for our national anthem and the invocation that follows. Here to sing the national anthem is Dr. Julieta Sunchian, a 2009 graduate of COMP and medical director of Samaritan Lebanon Primary Care. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Twilight's last gleaming, whose broad 
Leading us in today's invocation is Reverend Wes Sedlicek, chaplain of the Lebanon Community Hospital. Thank you so much for the honor of being with you on this special occasion. You might imagine correctly that as a chaplain, uh, as a hospital chaplain, I deal with a lot of challenging things. And so it is a great joy to be able to be involved in times of celebration. Obviously, these past couple of years have not given us many opportunities for celebration and joy. They have, however, incorporated a few words more thoroughly into our language. I'll take this off so you can see me. I'm not sure I've heard the words pivot or nimble as many times before now. And we've also heard the resilience, the word resilience quite a lot. While some could argue these words were overused these past couple years, all three words resonate largely with me now as I look out upon you. During your time in medical school, you were forced to pivot when it came to doing classes online. You had to be nimble when you dealt with clinical rotations and the various precautions that were in place during that time. And your presence today here is a sign of your amazing resilience. You have made it, we have all made it to May of 2022 and to this graduation. This serves as a launching point for your new lives. It is likely that you will forever be impacted by this pandemic and the experiences that you've had, but it doesn't have to be in a negative way. You can set your eyes toward a positive future Embracing each moment as it comes and using your skills and compassion to serve others. From the pain, heartache, and challenge, you've shown great resilience to get to this day. What you've learned during these past years will make you better doctors, and most importantly, better people. And I'm so excited to be here with you to be able to celebrate this. So with all of these thoughts in mind, I invite all of us to pray as you are comfortable. Divine Presence, Great Spirit, God of many names. We have come through times of isolation and distancing to be gathered here today. It is our connection with one another that helps to make us stronger. May we find support in the people who surround us, and may we be enriched by this time together. We pray that these new graduates will be inspired by the work that lies before them. Let them serve with dedication, excellence, and respect. Allow the challenges of these past couple years to hone them to be better people and better doctors. May their learnings help to make a difference in this world, especially in all the lives they will touch. We pause to remember today, one who is not beside us, but is present in our hearts, Dr. Michael Hines. May his smile and his laughter continue to echo through this school 
and most especially through his friends and family who are gathered here. Let Michael and all those who have died continue to remind us that our moment is now. As we move through this ceremony and we go forth into the world, we pray that we will continue to be resilient and to meet the challenges that are put before us. For we trust in your blessing and guidance and we celebrate the strength that we draw from one another. It is with great gratitude and joy that we offer these prayers today. Please be seated. Distinguished guests, the chair of the Board of Trustees of Western University of Health Sciences, Dr. Elizabeth Zamora. to Dr. Juliet Asuncion and Chaplain Wes Sedlicek for that wonderful opening to our ceremony today. It is my honor and pleasure to be with you today and represent the Western U Board of Trustees. Welcome to my fellow board members, Western U administrators, graduates, families, faculty, staff, and distinguished guests. Today is your day and you should all feel so proud that together we are sending these prepared healthcare providers into the world to do their best work yet. Each Western U class has a fascinating group personality of its own. Here's a snapshot of this year's graduating class. Of the 104 graduates, there are 56 women and 48 men. The youngest is age 25 and the oldest is age 40. They come from 12 Oregon counties and 23 U.S. states. And now, let me offer some words of inspiration to our graduates. Today, you receive your degrees after dedicating years to your studies. As you celebrate, consider this day to be a significant reflection point, a time to appreciate your past years of demanding work that brought you to this preeminent day of accomplishment. And as you look to the past, so you will look to the future. Graduation represents the end of your studies. Commencement is the beginning of something new. So today, we celebrate your educational achievement and we celebrate your commencement as you begin the important work of the rest of your lives. I hope you take with you the foundational elements of your Western U education. Foundational elements such as compassion, caring, Western U graduates destined to provide transformative health care and create healthy communities wherever life takes you. Congratulations. And now I would like to introduce Western U's president, Dr. Robin Farias Eisner. The Western U Board of Trustees appointed Dr. Farias Eisner as Western U's third president, effective March 1st of this year. He came to us from Creighton University, where he was director of the Henry Lynch Comprehensive Cancer Research Center and chief academic officer in the School of Medicine. He was also dean of women's health and professor and chairman of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Creighton School of Medicine. Prior to his appointment at Creighton, Dr. Farias Eisner was recruited to the University of Illinois' Emergency Medicine Res Residency Training Program with a focus on surgical critical care. Recognizing his love for education, the University of Illinois offered him a faculty position to train future resident physicians. UCLA recognized Dr. Farias Eisner's unique clinical skills in critical care medicine and recruited him to continue training in the greatly needed area of women's health. In 1990, Dr. Farias Eisner completed residency training in obstetrics and gynecology at UCLA, and in 1992, he completed a fellowship in surgical oncology for women at UCLA. 
Dr. Faria Zeisner then spent the next 30 years working in leadership positions at UCLA to improve the health of women through the establishment of successful delivery models for high quality patient care and high level cancer research. Over the past decade, he has served as the principal investigator for a highly impactful NIH grant to eliminate healthcare disparities in cancer cohorts in underserved populations in Los Angeles. President Faria Seisner has a decorated academic pedigree that includes a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry from UCLA, a medical doctorate degree from the Royal College of Surgeons in Dublin, Ireland, a PhD in Molecular Biology from the Molecular Biology Institute at UCLA, and an MBA from Pepperdine University. He is board certified in emergency medicine, obstetrics and gynecology, and gynecologic oncology. Dr. Faria Seisner is professor emeritus at the University of California and professor at Creighton University School of Medicine. President and Mrs. Faria Seisner have a home in Pomona and a home in Calabasas. At their family home in Calabasas, they raised five children and they now have three grandchildren, one who has just joined us on April 25th. Dr. Faria Seisner takes the lead at a transformative time in healthcare and a transformational time for Western Europe. Please give a warm welcome to President Robin Faria Seisner. Thank you, Chair Zamora. To members of the class of 2022, faculty, honored guests, trustees, administration, alumni, family, friends, and Western University Oregon Advisory Board members who have graced us with their presence today. Welcome to the 41st Annual Commencement Exercises for Western University of Health Sciences, Comp Northwest. Congratulations, graduates. I am absolutely thrilled and honored to be here with you today, here in Oregon and in person. I love Oregon. What a great feeling of tranquility when you fly into Oregon, no slight on LA, but when you fly into LA, I'm always anxious and I don't know why. I love the opportunity right here in Lebanon to serve this fine community in the Willamette Valley. I am 500% committed to the growth and expansion of Comp Northwest and the campus, PTOT, and all that will come in the future. I am 500% committed to you students, to the faculty, our staff, and to all here in this area and on this campus. I love what I see in Oregon. I am also immensely committed to rural medicine, equity, elimination of healthcare disparities, our rural communities right here in Oregon. I am also committed to primary care, population health, community medicine, right here in Oregon. This year's commencement theme is gratitude, and I give gratitude to this community for the extraordinary support that you have given to these esteemed graduates. Please join me in recognizing this amazing feat I would also like to take a moment to express appreciation for those who have made this magic moment happen. Notably, the remarkable work of our commencement team under the leadership of Dr. Maribel Fernandez-Paul, Assistant Vice President for University Student Affairs at Western U Oregon, as well as the Departments of Informational Technology, Facilities, Public Relations, and Campus Books for a very heartfelt thank you 
Also a special mention is due to Kelsey Aglin and One Source Strategy. Please join me in thanking them. Thank you. It is humbling and it is an honor, pleasure and a privilege to be a participant and actively engaged for the first time in these coveted commencement exercises at this wonderful university. Servant leadership is my philosophy. I serve you and the community. It's not the other way around. As your new president, my focus has been effectively serving the constituents of our five branches of university government, our esteemed student body, our faculty, our staff, our deans, administrators, and of course our board of trustees and the advisory board here. Of paramount importance to me is to serve and engage with our communities right here. My first day as university president was March 1st, and I am grateful to the students for all that has been done to help in that mission. Extraordinary progress has been, has been made, and together we've done it over such a short period of time. And I say thank you. And as you launch your careers, I believe that we must continue to honor you in a variety of ways. We will launch a successful, comprehensive capital campaign to realize our dreams right here in Oregon. We will build upon the generous Hetherington Foundation donation of 150 acres of land here, coupled with the foundation's $22.5 million anchoring donation. We will turn our focus to create revenue diversity, independence from student tuition. We will focus on rural medicine, behavioral health right here, on population health and on community medicine. We will focus on Oregon in every way, and we will grow and build this incredible new campus right here. We have set our sights on establishment of scholarship and lowering tuition. We will create educational opportunities for our underserved populations right here in Lebanon and the surrounding rural communities that are in great need. We will also, right here in Comp Northwest, we will expand educational infrastructure. We will forge new partnerships with the community leaders and le legislators throughout the state. We will design an innovative plan, not only to grow and expand the campus, but to integrate into the community in a meaningful way. And we will actively search for new partners throughout. I am absolutely delighted to celebrate today with you. And as new graduates, you recognize the critical need, global need, for uniquely trained healthcare providers, you, who possess a coveted and unique humanistic and compassionate skill set. You embody those ethos. You are now our ambassadors. The success of delivering the right product, the right skill at the right place, at the right time, for the first time and every time, I believe, is what drives large career successes. As new ambassadors, the global community is ready for your skills, truly ready for you. This is your time. While writing my thesis for my executive MBA program, I was impressed with an intriguing educational model described in a Harvard Business Review publication called the Goldilocks Effect, which aptly characterizes your career opportunities because of your truly unique training. The Goldilocks principle is named by analogy to the children's story, The Three Bears, in which we all know the story of the young girl named Goldilocks who tastes the various porridges and decides finally she finds the right one. Just perfect. This concept can be applied to you. This is just the right time to enter the healthcare global community with just the right skill set. Humanism, compassion, focus on the individual patient, inclusive of the whole body, mind, and spirit. 
you bring a model of value-based, patient-centered, and individualized, specific, high quality of care to your future patients. You are also trained to be adaptable, flexible, to deliver the care that is required in spite of unpredictable challenges with you, which you will be confronted in the future. You graduate from, from a young yet very special university at a time, a unique time in history. Please consider another analogy of the most glorious oak trees that begins its life as an acorn. The mighty oak is Western University of Health Sciences and the acorn was the single osteopathic medical school with only a few students, faculty, and staff. The founding college has grown into the most comprehensive of graduate health sciences universities globally with nine distinguished colleges that together and individually are unmatched in my opinion. I am not aware of any graduate health sciences university that can rival that model. However, we must grow and expand our infrastructure in order to keep pace with the growing educational demands and opportunities. It was only 40 years ago that only 31 graduates representing the inaugural class of the College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific received their diplomas from this fine institution. In contrast, you, in 2022, these commencement exercises, at their conclusion, we will have awarded 1,086 degrees an enormous contrast to the charter class. Extraordinary growth in the number of graduates, but you know the feeling of satisfaction that comes from the completion of any critically impactful endeavor. Finally, it's done, I did it. All the hard work paid off. Even more important, imagine graduating with this coveted degree. How special is that? This is the beginning of your career a new and exhilarating chapter in your lives. Countless more exciting chapters surely await you, but this is special, very special. You now, in my opinion, are uniquely trained, adaptable, highly technically proficient health professionals and humanistic and compassionate healers, true ambassadors of the ethos and brand of the Western University model and of Comp Northwest. It is your skill set that is desperately needed, your agility and humanism and compassion, dedicated and focused on quality rather than quantity, and it's a difficult juggle to be agile and yet adapt. Permit me to just share a relevant anecdote. The setting is All of You Medical Center, UCLA Medical Center, which is an LA County facility in the, in the San Fernando Valley. And there, I, on labor and delivery, it had just opened, but was exceedingly busy. I was a second year resident, training in obstetrics and gynecology, and we were doing 750 deliveries a month. That's a lot of deliveries. A lot of babies, though, and cute babies. I love babies. We had just applied for more funding to expand the infrastructure, which was dreadful, and to meet the tremendous patient needs. So the LA City Supervisors, the team, visited to assess the need. Who's in charge here, they asked. And I said, I'm the resident in charge. Simultaneously, as we stand on labor and delivery, out of the corner of my eye, I see a, multi a grand multiparous patient. The definition means over five prior births. And she looked like she was ready to deliver, if you know what I mean, impending and precipitous. I see her sprint into the bathroom nearby. The LA supervisors, their back was to the patient. So I was concerned. So I immediately excuse myself abruptly and I run to the bathroom. They thought it was for my own personal need. <laughs> when I get to the bathroom, I could hear her need and her need for my 
skills. Mind you, we had all of the bathrooms outfitted with BOA kits, born out of a sepsis kits. So I delivered the baby. What else could I do? Very cute baby. <laughs> Mom was fine. The nurses uh, obviously responded. And then I wrap up the baby in a blanket and I walk out of the bathroom. At this point, the LA supervisors turn around to greet me and they see me come out of the bathroom with a baby. <laughs> they were shocked. Their mouths were open and they were absolutely shocked. We didn't really have much more of a conversation. I went to deliver many more babies. Our funding came a month later. <laughs> now that's adaptability. <laughs> Come on, graduates, you would have done the same. You're ready. Remember, you are all lifetime learners, ambassadors, leaders, embracers of new experiences. That's why today it's called commencement rather than conclusion. And you are poised now for a new start. And you are a beacon of promise. Your new journey beckons one full new challenge, new relationships, new locations to explore, new opportunities abound. And you're blessed, in my view, to be equipped with these extraordinary tools for this new extraordinary journey. But we must also credit the excellent faculty at the university right here, all of whom have walked paths very much like your own. As we celebrate our, you, our graduates, so too should we celebrate our faculty, our deans, our leaders, our stakeholders, for nowhere is there a group more dedicated to your academic and professional success. These mentors and teachers have invested themselves in you not only to ensure that you're technically superb and expert, but also to prepare you to embody the art of humanism and compassion and equity as you lead by example and you soar into your successful next chapter. High grades and scores are great achievements we all know, but far more important to us is the greatest accomplishment of all your special and coveted identity, this identity which you now can bring to the world, your humanistic values, your character, your patient, compassionate collegiality, forthrightness is critically important just as your clinical know-how is and your technical mastery is important in the combination of these amazing qualities, your superb technical skill coupled with humanism and character, that's what defines your skill and your mission. You're special in every way. Never lose your identity. It's too important. Permit me another quick anecdote. The setting is my surgical oncology clinic at UCLA. A patient who's 101 arrives in the clinic. She's a retired family medicine doctor who serviced the rural communities. And she was just the sweetest patient in the world. And I asked her, and she was, had so much wisdom, so I was anxious to draw some of that from her. So I said, what is it like being 100? What's the best part of being over 100 years old? And she stopped, and she thought for a moment. And then she said, well, I have to confide. There's a lot less peer group pressure. You gotta love her. But she also said that you must remain true to your identity and to your core values, and your osteopathic core values are special. Our faculty have lived this mission through all of their interactions with you in classrooms, clinical settings, but most of all through the examples they set as highly capable, compassionate, humanistic healthcare professionals. I ask that you join me today in acknowledging and honoring the excellence of our extraordinary faculty as they stand to be recognized. Please, faculty, kindly stand while we recognize you.
I also wish to acknowledge a heartfelt thank you and recognition to our extraordinary staff. Without our staff, quite honestly, nothing is possible. Thank you to all of you, our staff, for what you have done. Please permit me to also recognize other unsung heroes, the group behind the scenes who are working tirelessly to shepherd our university, their stewardship, countless hours of servitude, our distinguished board of trustees, and our distinguished Western University Oregon Advisory Board, and our distinguished deans. Please rise to be recognized as well. A special recognition to our retiring Dean of Podiatric Medicine, Dr. Satterfield. Thank you for your extraordinary years of service. Special gratitude to our former Dean of Comp Northwest, who now, I'm blessed to say, is the interim provost of the university, Dr. Paula Crone. How excited am I to have her as a provost, truly blessed. Class of 2022, what an amazing journey this has been for you. In what were seemingly insurmountable obstacles, you've prevailed. We've heard over and over again about your resilience, beginning with a pandemic that kept most of you in class at home for the better part of two years. What an adventure, business even of daily life, an endless sequence of challenges, but you persevered. Now you will have not only a diploma, but a great story to tell. Where was I when the great pandemic hit? Well, I was studying for a health science professional degree. Sufficient superlatives do not exist to adequately describe all of you for achieving the seemingly impossible, insurmountable in many ways, reaching this point against all odds. You made it. Kudos. What a relief. I would like to congratulate you for that unparalleled and unmatched feat. Congratulations from all of us. <laughs> to give you just an idea about the commencements and the honor and the magnitude of what this university is doing, this year five ceremonies were held in Pasadena California, the College of Podiatric Medicine, the College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific, the Graduate College of Biomedical Sciences, the College of Health Sciences. Ceremonies, they all took place on May over last week. The Colleges of Dental Medicine, Pharmacy, Graduates of Nursing, Optometry on May 19th, and the College of Veterinary Medicine on May 20th. Throughout all of those commencements, an important tradition is the presentation of the university label, PIN, to each and every one of our distinguished esteemed graduates. The PINs will be presented by our alumni representative, Brian Gould, DO, MSN, class of 2016. The PIN is offered as a gift to the newest members of our alumni family, you and bears the university seal and the degree that the graduate has earned. We hope that you will wear the pin often and with pride as ambassadors for the Western University of Health Sciences and the health professionals. We hope that you wear it. Now permit me a few to deliver a few inspirational words and accomplishments. I would like to share some highlights of those extraordinary accomplishments with you as well. 
It has long since come to my attention that people of accomplishment rarely sat back and let things happen to them. They went out and made things happen. These are the inspirational words of Leonardo da Vinci, an Italian of the High Renaissance, who was an active scientist and sculptor and a visionary. He easily could have been referring to our esteemed class of 2022. You and your families and your loved ones when he made those statements five centuries ago. He astutely noted that truly accomplished individuals such as yourselves demonstrate relentless tenacity, dedication, despite adversity. You, the college, and your university, your families, it is particularly you that exemplify this definition of being truly accomplished. So I would like to please spend a minute and just thank your families and your loved ones for all the support that they have given to you. Thank you so much for that. Despite all the challenges, you did not permit yourselves to be negatively impacted. You adapted, adjusted, took a deep breath, forged forward. You embraced as pioneers an educational paradigm as well, a shift toward online didactics and on-hand simulation, a shift from in-classroom to online learning. You've made history. This pioneering emergence of a new model of higher education is being adopted nationally. The truth is, you're doers, and you've made things happen. Just in Leonardo's words, we're on a first name basis now. The world has never been more ready to receive your skill set than now. It's your identity that you must always protect. It's a value model patient-centered, individual-specific, and high-quality care. And just as we alluded to earlier, please never compromise value or quality for quantity. It's just not, it's just not worth it. Now I'd like to just give you a little quick anecdote that I shared with the vet med class Friday. So the, I'm gonna set the scene at the LA Zoo, there was a very popular orangutan, Rosie, very popular with the elementary school kids, who was dying of sepsis. She was curled up in her habitat. They did a quick ultrasound and they found a right lower quadrant pelvic mass. So they called me. So I go there with my team, with my fellow, my resident and students, students just like yourself, we all hopped into the car and spent two hours in traffic. No, I, it, it, then we finally got to the zoo. And we, so Rosie's four feet tall, but has an arm span of, of, of eight feet. And she was curled up in the habitat. Uh, her left hook uh, could be menacing. So we, we did, uh, I did call my anesthesia team. We put her uh, under anesthesia and did an ultrasound and there was a large mass in the right lower quadrant. We decided to operate. We operated, and after figuring out the comparative anatomy, their, ce their, their cecum is funneled and their appendices are tiny. Instead, there was this huge zucchini-like structure in the peritoneum, in the peritoneal cavity that was an appendix. It was a ruptured appendix full of purulence and, and a pioperitoneum. So as you know, the solution to pollution is dilution, so we irrigated, did the appendectomy, and Rosie was just great the next day running around. I'm not suggesting you go out tomorrow and operate on orangutans, <laughs> but I am suggesting that you always be adaptable even to help our non-human patients. You never know when the opportunity arises. The other anecdote is the, the African green monkeys at the Sepulveda primate colony that needed C-sections. They always have difficulty in childbirth and often die. So that we did that as well. Always an interesting uh, break from the, from the usual. But I would like to compliment and offer 
the following accomplishments from Comp Northwest specifically. The faculty and you, the students, were able to pivot quickly and efficiently, always flexible, maintaining your outstanding curriculum. Always education was your focus. Exemplary services were put in place by you and by your faculty and staff in order to achieve your future goals. You very quickly set up outstanding, well-rounded opportunities through curriculum changes to create the curriculum that resulted in this outstanding education that you received. So congratulations for doing that and demonstrating the resilience as we've heard over and over again. The time has proved that the answer is always a resounding yes to the question, could an enduring educational entity be built upon this criti these critically important values and tenets that you know from the founders? Of course, that's why we're here. Indeed, the robust and sustainable vision of the founders and our founding tenants are more important today than ever. Our campus, your loved ones, your families, alumni, we all re remain reunited behind these principles, behind this mission, the mission endures. Acknowledgement of an inflection point in this time and healthcare specifically is upon us. And we seek fresh opportunities to engage our communities, to broaden our educational and clinical reach and to make meaningful and positive changes in the lives of all those we serve. So we can and we will together catapult our Lebanon campus to a position of prominence nationally and internationally by setting an ambitious trajectory shared by our mission and our message of humanism and our history to date. So that, I tell you, if I had a glass, I would raise it right now. In 1981, I was exactly where you are today, profoundly meaningful point in my life, having just graduated from the Royal College of Surgeons. What an honor. And I would like to underscore the importance of quality of care and versus quantity. You already know how precious time can be, and I always believed in those principles. They became increasingly more common and more important to me as my career progressed. And I think it's a, it's a concept that we must embrace and continue as medical education changes in our country. You are amazing. We at Western U will no doubt continue to be amazed at what you accomplish. Please take time to celebrate today with family and friends and to reflect on your journey and your accomplishments. And please congratulate yourself and please allow us to congratulate you today, you deserve it. Please know that we're always, and always you will be part of the special educational enterprise that you've been so important in helping to create. This is your time and a moment in time to embrace the words of Michelangelo. Your gifts lie in the place where your values, passions, and strengths meet. Discovering that place is the first step towards sculpting your masterpiece, that is your career and your life. So congratulations and Godspeed to the class of 2022. Please welcome Interim Provost and Chief Academic Officer of Western University of Health Sciences and Vice President of Western U, Oregon, Dr. Paula Crone. Congratulations, graduates. We've been waiting four years to say that to you. <laughs> yeah. And what a four years they've been. I feel like a proud parent as I look out at our graduates every year, and every year I feel like Paul and I are adding another 103 to our family, and we really feel like we do. Each class is special. This one especially so, for so many reasons. Thank you, President Faris Eisner, Chair Zamora, and our Board of Trustees. 
And uh, thank you to our Western University Advancement Board as well, the Western U Oregon Advancement Board. Thank you, Dean Conant, Site Lead Hudson, and all of our Comp Northwest faculty and staff. I also want to thank our CHS Northwest and Comp faculty for being here with us today. We are all in this together. This is such a special day of celebration for our graduates and a time of appreciation for all of our Western U community. My heartfelt welcome to all in our audience today, including our Lebanon community for always, always supporting us and standing with us. Our friends at Samaritan Health Systems for always being there with us and helping to build forward. And for all of you that support us and show up every day, every time, becoming part of the fabric of who we are. We are grateful and we are better because of it. And a welcome to all of our colleagues from Western U who traveled up from Pomona this, uh, this week to be with us today and stand in solidarity with us at Comp Northwest. Special shout out to Dean Schilling and Dean Satterfield who always stand shoulder to shoulder with all. This is Dean Satterfield's final commencement before she retires. She will be greatly missed and has been a gentle giant to all of us. I'd like to give a round of applause for Dean Satterfield. <laughs> to Dr. Gunther, Dr. Drybelbus, and Dr. Pham, as they leave to take on new opportunities. To Dr. Kisby and Dr. Aversano, who are both retiring this year, both founding members of our Comp Northwest family and close to our hearts. And to Dr. Kandari, who came out of retirement to be our university marshal, traveling to be with us this week. Thank you. A round of applause for all of these individuals. the stories that we can all tell. It's a graduation day for a class of medical student that has been through so much to get here, more so than any class to graduate so far. I think that is worthy of special mention and worthy of much celebration from all of them and for all of them. Today, as I do with every graduation, I always reflect back on my own graduation day uh, my family gathered together, coming from all over. Uh, some of them, uh, that, that during my graduation, it was the last time I would see them. So graduation, I always think back to those family and friends that are so dear to me and the memories. And I uh, hope for all of you, as you keep going through and checking off all of your milestones, you start gathering and holding tight to those memories as well for yourselves. I never, ever fail to feel hopeful and proud, so proud of you, as I watch our graduates receive their diplomas each year. This year, it's even more personal. We have all been through a lot together since you first started at Western U. From once in a hundred year fires, remember that? Uh, to a global pandemic, uh, which you'll never forget. We have tackled tough social issues, and we have worked for true global change. There are moments in the last four years with all of you that will never be forgotten. And for all of us, Dr. Michael Hines will be carried forward with us in our hearts. An extra round of applause for our graduating fellows and our SGA leaders who through this pandemic served above and beyond to support their classmates and all, that, and all those that follow behind them. Thank you. Your generation uh, truly has already changed the fundamental nature of everything that we do. And we walked through that together almost every single day over these last four years. You will continue to do so. You are shaping the future. Please take good care of it and shape it well because what you do and how you do it is gonna impact all of us. As you graduate today and you celebrate this proud milestone, you prepare to enter the front lines of a battle against diseases of all kinds, not just COVID-19. There will be new frontiers of science and knowledge for you to discover and learn from. 
new challenges to face and obstacles to overcome. In this world filled with division and wounds, you have the opportunity to serve and to heal. Indeed, it's actually one of your callings as a Western U graduate as you move forward and take your place in healthcare. And know that as you do so, we are very proud of you and we have great confidence in you. You're entering a profession where you get to make an impact one moment at a time, one patient at a time, one community at a time. You each traversed those long days of study as you discovered the wonders of the human form and you conquered each rite of passage. You learned how to drink from that proverbial fire hose as you navigated through all of your courses and all those layers of learning interwoven between them. And without realizing it, as you did all of that, you are no longer the college student with the college student's mentality. You became part of something much bigger as you began down the path of your serious and noble profession where everything you learn and everything you do has future implications, future possibility, and future hope. Graduates, all of us have been humbled so frequently as we have watched you learn, watched you grow, and watched you gain your confidence. As you found your voices and as you've worked so hard to get to where you are today. As you do your own reflection, remember those special individuals who helped you along the way, those that never gave up on you, who taught you those unforgettable hard-learned lessons, those that pushed you and those that believed in you. Treasure them and thank them and keep thanking them. Never stop learning and never forget that you have the ability to make a difference and never stop caring nor stop trying to make your corner of the world a better place. Keep honing your expertise, your knowledge, and your skills, and never lo lose your humanity, your compassion, and your ability to care. As many of you have heard me say before, this world has never needed you more. Nor have we ever had a generation of students more ready to go out there and make our world a better place. I wish for all of you to be courageous, to be leaders in your communities, and always, always the champions of your patients, to be healers and to seek wellness, not just treat disease, to be proud of your profession, to be proud of who you are, where you come from, and where you are going, to not only stand on the shoulders of the giants that came before you, like Dean Satterfield, to be, but to become that giant yourself, so that others may stand upon your shoulders someday. Always strive for excellence and always keep your standards set high. Your patients will count on you for that. Never forget to care for your patients with purpose, passion, and skill, to use your head, your hands, and your heart, to listen and to care. And always remember what I told you four years ago at your white coat ceremony. The end of every action, every thought, every deed, there's your patient. Graduates, no matter where you go and what you do next, you are always part of our Western U family and you will always have a place in our hearts. Congratulations, class of 2022. We are so proud of you. Thank you. Now, Mr. President, it is my pleasure to begin the presentation for an honorary degree. I have for your consideration the Honorable Consuelo Callahan, our candidate for an honorary degree. I'd like to invite Judge Callahan to the podium to join us. For the past four years, Vice Chair Consuelo Callahan has served this university tirelessly and without compensation. I repeat, without compensation.
Vice Chair Callahan spent countless hours serving the students, the faculty, through the challenging years of the pandemic and the years of transition to new leadership. In the quest of relentless support of shared governance, accreditation, institutional quality assurance, diversity, equity, and inclusion through new leadership and beyond. I invite you to refer to the program for the extraordinary summary and highlights of this distinguished career and unbelievable accomplishments of the Honorable Consuelo Callahan. Now, Mr. President, it is my pleasure to present the Honorable Consuelo Callahan as a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. Thank you, Dr. Crone. Now, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the Honorable Consuelo Callahan, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all the rights, honors, privileges appertaining thereto. In witness thereof, I cause you to be vested with the hood appropriate to the degree, and I grant you this diploma. Congratulations. Thank you. They said I had one minute. So I want to thank all of you for this wonderful honor and congratulate all of you and your families, the faculty, your professional parents, your real parents, and everyone that has supported you today. What comes to mind to me today are the words of a famous poet, Maya Angelou. What she said is, I've learned that people will forget what you said, they'll forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Thank you for the feelings you've given me today. I am honored. I feel validated. Um, I feel inspired by all that you have done. And you make me feel worthy. And going forward, as and you make me feel like a Western grad which is incredible because I'm not really that, but now I'm one of you. And so I take that forward and what I say to you as well in congratulating you. You're going to say a lot of wonderful things. You're going to do a lot of wonderful things, both personally and professionally. But what's really going to be your legacy is how you make people feel. And thank you for making me feel so valued today. And please do that for me as you go forward. Thank you. Presenting the posthumous degree today is Assistant Vice President of Western U Oregon University Student Affairs and Assistant Dean of Comp Northwest Student Affairs, Dr. Mirabel Fernandez Paul. degree to be conferred today is a posthumous degree to Michael Joseph Hines. Today Michael would have walked across the stage to receive his Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine degree from Dean Conant and President Farias Eisner. We tragically lost Michael not long ago and although our hearts are heavy, we are extremely proud to present Michael's diploma along with his cap his tassel and cords to his family who have traveled here to be with us today. I would like to now invite Michael's mother, Anne Hines, his father, Philip Hines, and aunt, Dr. Karen Maloney, to join our dean and president on stage to receive Michael's diploma and hood.
We, we greatly appreciate members of the Heinz family who are here to celebrate the accomplishments of all our graduates, especially their beloved son, brother, nephew, cousin, and friend, Michael. Michael's legacy will live on through the Dr. Michael J. Hines Memorial Fund, started by Michael's family in December. In less than three months, thanks to the efforts of his family and friends, as well as the Western U. Comp Northwest family, the Memorial Fund has attained full endowment designation. Michael had a driving passion for medicine, developing a strong connection to surgery, and he had a bright future as a surgeon. Extremely dedicated to his studies, Michael took pride in staying in the top 10% of his class and being on the dean's list year after year. Most of all, Michael wanted to serve his patients well. He dazzled his preceptors with impressive medical knowledge great bedside manner, and a natural ability to instantly make patients feel comfortable. Michael also demonstrated the attitude and professionalism that would have made him an exceptional osteopathic physician. Dr. Michael J. Hines will forever live in our hearts and will be missed by faculty, staff, and students who were touched by his laughter, humor, and kindness. May all of our graduates carry his passion forward as they embark as future physicians. Michael, thank you for choosing Lebanon, Oregon, and us from your medical school journey. We will never forget your beautiful spirit and generous heart. It is not goodbye, it's see you later, doc. Now we get to a very special portion of these exciting ceremonies in which we have the honor to present to you a diploma. Dr. Connor. Now will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine please rise and stand in place. Mr. President. Mr. President, the assembled candidates have met the requirements for graduation and have been recommended by the faculty for the degree of Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine. It is my pleasure to present them to you. Thank you, Dean Conant. Graduates, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you, as you individually present yourselves, the degree of Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine with all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Will the graduates please come to the stage to receive your diploma? Dr. Abigail Lynn Calkins. <laughs> Dr. Yuri Dasar. Dr. Jan Andrea Talaro Garo. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Kiori Marimoto. Dr. Nurusha Ochini Abedira. Excuse me, Dr. Alec Joseph Ajar. In absentia, Dr. Alexis Marie Amatisto. Dr. Brittany Lee Banfer. Dr. Talia Winship Barnes. Dr. Joseph Aaron Bezekti. Dr. Matthew Aldred Birmingham. Dr. Justin Ross Blaskowski. Dr. A.J. Zachary Breen. Dr. Emily Joanne Brenda. Dr. Angelo Xavier Brennan. Dr. Samantha Grace Brennan. Dr. Christina Katie Beater. <laughs> Dr. Hallie Elizabeth Kershiznik Burley. Dr. Lillian Noel Burroughs. Okay. In absentia, Dr. Abraham Pierce Campbell. Dr. Monica Kanami Carroll. Dr. Daniel Colin Carter. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Sahil Chavla. Dr. Joni Aaron Chow. Dr. Bryce David Civic. Dr. Cade Michael Cloward. Dr. Emily Sue Cloward. Dr. Andrew Emerson Cox. Dr. William Graham Crowley. Dr. Bridget Walsh Dahlberg. Dr. Alexandra Lee Dalton. Dr. Preston David Danielson. Dr. Dana Noel D. Cruff. <clears throat> Dr. Heidi Duong. Dr. Ashlyn Daniel Lawson Edwards. Dr. Arani Omid Ezenrick. Dr. Elizabeth Ann Fury. Dr. Julia Pauline Fisher. Dr. Mario Frank Gadini. <laughs> Dr. Cameron Wade Garvin. Dr. Stephen Gay. Dr. Emily Asta Hansen. Dr. Justin Henry Washburn Harris. <laughs> Dr.
Dr. Jesse Miorca May Herman. Dr. Lisa Sunwai Nguyen. Dr. Christopher Doyle Ingram. Dr. Sophie Serafina Ferrari Jones. Dr. Ashley Marie Curran Kenyon. Dr. Mary Elizabeth Kirby. Dr. Jeffrey Edward Kerr. Dr. Christina Asian Kim. Dr. Rory Cullen King. Dr. Austin Carl Client. In abstentia, Dr. Devin Joshua Kuhlman. Dr. Nathaniel Jack Leavitt. Dr. Kun Wu Lee. In abstentia, Dr. Michael Corbin Lethan. Dr. Feng Xin Li. Dr. Tyler Lee Madison. Dr. William Cooper Proctor Maloney. Dr. Kavya Mandy. Dr. Gabrielle Nicole Marquez. Dr. Ashley Katrina McRoberts.
Dr. Nathan Thomas Maldrovic. Dr. Darian Taylor Mulberry. Dr. Mackenzie Lee Winter Murphy. Dr. Chapchip Natongkla. Dr. Whitley Fay Nelson. Dr. Patricia Wong Fung Nguyen. Dr. Sierra Crystal Nicole. Dr. Kiera Margaret O'Driscoll. <laughs> Dr. Christine Jayung Park. Dr. Romel B. Patel. <laughs> Dr. Marcus Cole Pearson. Dr. Vicki Ping Chung. <laughs> Dr. Sean McKenzie Phillips. Dr. Lisa Q. <laughs> Dr. Holly Michael Russell. Dr. Nicholas Jeffrey Sanseri. <laughs> Dr. Philip James Shera. Dr. Jessica Shen. <laughs> Dr. Lucas Cole Short.
Dr. Luke Morgan Smith. Dr. Zachary Michael Smith. <laughs> Dr. Victoria May Starzik. Dr. Kyle Lee Still. <laughs> Dr. Kevin David Strawn. Dr. Rachel Suzanne Sundman. <laughs> Dr. Audrey Hart Taylor. Dr. Amanda Catherine Tepp. <laughs> Dr. Jasmine Danielle Townsley. Dr. Elise Ton Thien Tran. <laughs> Dr. Jan Gael Aubryn Kamanian Ui. Dr. Alexa Faye Viniotis. <laughs> Dr. Bryn Elizabeth Walsh. Dr. Nathan Gabriel Weston. <laughs> Dr. Jane Yi Wong. Dr. Nicholas Wingsing Wu. <laughs> Dr. Robert Woodruff. Dr. Jeremiah John Woods. <laughs> Dr.
Dr. Wendy Wu. Dr. Irene Young. <laughs> Dr. Kevin Alexander Zinnaker. Last one till next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kandari. No, I know. <laughs> Thank you. I, I have the pleasure to introduce Madeline Hudson Dio, Interim Site Lead, College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific, Assistant Professor of Behavioral Medicine and Psychiatry. She will lead the class in the osteopathic oaths. So at this time, I invite the DOs in the audience and those on the platform who wish to renew their oath to stand with Dr. Hudson and the class of 2022. Would the new DOs please rise? Doctors, as you look toward your future as osteopathic physicians, hold this oath dear. You will bear witness to life's greatest joys and life's greatest sorrows, and that, my dear doctor, is a privilege. Pledge with me and your fellow, fellow physicians today to accept that privilege with integrity, respect, the scientific process, and compassion. Please turn to page 104 in your commencement programs. Raise your right hand and recite along with me. I do hereby affirm my loyalty to the profession I am about to enter. I will be mindful always of my great responsibility to preserve the health and life of my patients, to retain their confidence and respect, both as a physician and a friend who will guard their secrets with scrupulous honor and fidelity, to perform faithfully my professional duties, to employ only those recognized methods of treatment consistent with good judgment and with my skill and ability, keeping in mind always nature's laws and the body's inherent capacity for recovery. I will be ever vigilant in aiding the general welfare of the community, sustaining its laws and institutions, not engaging in those practices which will in any way bring shame or disrespect upon myself or my profession. I will give no drugs for deadly purposes to any person, though it may be asked of me. I will endeavor to work in accord with my colleagues in a spirit of progressive cooperation and never by word or by act cast imputations upon them or their rightful practices. 
I will look with respect and esteem upon all those who have taught me my art. To my college, I will be loyal and strive always for its best interests and for the interests of the students who will come after me. I will be ever alert to further the application of basic biologic truths to the healing arts and to develop the principles of osteopathic medicine as taught by my profession. In the presence of this gathering, I bind myself to my oath. It is my pleasure to introduce Brian Gould Dio, class of 2016. Dr. Gould is an Adventist health sports medicine uh, physician. He will bring a welcome from the Western U Alumni Association. Dr. Gould. All right, so I think I'm cleaning up for batting cleanup here. And uh, well, Have a seat. There's no reason to stand for me. After listening to all the other speeches so far tonight, I was pretty much running through my mind the entire talk that I had and crossing out everything that I had written because there's a very common theme tonight or today. It's been tough. You guys are incredible. You made it through. Congratulations. Pretty much sums it up. So because I'm going to go off script, because literally half of this stuff is red at this point, um, it's going to be very similar to the way I cook. My wife can contest to that, that I pretty much just follow a bunch of recipes, throw them all out, and just do whatever I want to do anyway. So let's see how it turns out. Okay, so first of all, welcome everybody to Lebanon. This was home for me and my family for five years. It's an incredible place. It's a great school. Thank you all for the community and just welcome everybody here to this wonderful town. First of all, thank you, huge thank you to Western University of Health Sciences, College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific of Northwest. Whew. That has been challenging to say since day one. For having me back. Thanks for having me back. Sorry, she's always my Dean Crone. This is an incredible honor to be here in front of everyone here today and to be standing up here on the podium with and amongst the faculty here. These, these are truly the giants of, of whom shoulders we stand upon as we kind of grow, go throughout our uh, careers. This has been a tough, tough four years for y'all. I understand that. You've heard it all. I mean, a lot of people in my class, we would watch the lectures later on whatever streaming platform we had at that time. We didn't have Zoom, but whenever it was. On double speed, y'all didn't have, you didn't have a choice. You had to do things remotely. It's been difficult. You've had rotations pulled out from underneath you at the last second. We've had to scramble to do whatever you ended up doing, which is remarkable by itself. Med school is hard. This made it profoundly harder for all of you. And you did awesome. You're here. So congrats. I'd like to stand here and tell you that it gets easier, that you've made it. This is the end. Congrats. We're finished. Life's just easy and beautiful roses from here on out. But that would be a lie. It's always going to be an ongoing struggle to some degree. There's always going to be something that comes up. You have an incredible amount of knowledge at this point. The last four years, you have somehow pounded in a decade's worth of material into your heads. And for that, you have to be very, very proud. But now it's time to take the next step. Now it's time to move ahead and learn how to apply all that knowledge. You, need to, you get to learn how to fine tune all of your skills and knowledge that you obtained in whatever your given specialty is to take care of people. That's awesome. So let's keep moving forward and, and growing, always learning and just listening to the, the tenets that we've all heard a billion times. Um, now's the time where you transition. Today's the day you transition from being a student to being a practicing physician. Day one on residency, you are now practicing medicine. Thankfully for all of us, 
and you included, someone's going to be there watching you very closely. <laughs> but you're practicing medicine. And I really want to emphasize the word practicing. Everybody who is still practicing medicine is still practicing medicine. Nobody's conquered all of it. You'll always learn more. You will be humbled probably daily about things that you don't know and you didn't learn before or you had learned and forgot. It's going to happen and that's okay. But keep going and keep practicing. So most of you don't know who I am. I have a profound love for sport competition that has developed this probably pathologic love for the ancient Olympics and Greece to some degree. Um, there's a Greek philosophy or Greek principle that has stuck with me for since my first year of undergrad called Arete. A-R-E-T-E. -E. Now I sound like I'm in a spelling bee. Can, can I please have that in a sentence? Okay. In the purest form, arete is, not, is the pursuit of greatness. Let me say it again. The pursuit of greatness. This has resonated with me for a very long time. There's, I've had a lot of struggles here and there. My, well, Dean Crone, Dr. Crone can attest to some of the struggles that I had early on. How many, here is, how many people here are, have like type A personalities, right? No? I don't believe any of you. I'm pretty sure you're all type A to some degree. You made it through medical school. You have to be type A. We have a tendency to try to be perfect. You get frustrated when you miss a couple questions on a test. Sorry, you got 98%. Yeah, we, get, we dwell on the last two that we didn't get right. You don't have to be perfect. In the purest form, arte is the pursuit of greatness, not perfection. You don't have to be perfect all the time. Nobody's perfect. There's a pond out here. I'm pretty sure if we all took a step on it, we'd sink at least a little bit. This has been a philosophy that has stuck with me for know, decades. Unfortunately, we all forget it a little bit. We all kind of fall back on our ways and we try to be perfect. That's just going to be difficult for everybody. It puts too much pressure on yourselves. It means if you strive for perfection, if you slip and you fall a little bit, you dwell on the slip and the fall. You don't necessarily look back to learn from it. But that's how we get better. That's how we become great. Accept the things that happen. Accept the falls. Accept the slips. Learn from them. Move on. And just get better. That's how life works. Like I said, we all forget this. I had a moment in my fellowship where I was doing a procedure. I was trying to get that perfect vi uh, visual of the needle with the ultrasound. I was apparently spending way too long because my attending stepped in and said, do you know what the enemy to a good outcome is? He looks at me, it's trying to be perfect. God, dang it. I knew that. I've followed this for years, but you know, we all forget. We all slip. Just keep that in the back of your mind as we go. It might be hard to believe after the last four years, but you are nowhere close to how great you can be. You're not even close to the ceiling that's there. Matter of fact, we don't even have a ceiling. If you keep learning from your mistakes, keep trying to be better, keep criticizing, con constructively obviously, what you do and keep evaluating the things that you do, whether it's something you've done for the last 10 years, critique it, evaluate, say, is this the right thing? I know this is what we all do, but is this the right thing? You will push that ceiling further than you can possibly imagine. In your residency, in your training, in your practice, there will be times where you'll, something will happen and you'll think, there's no way I'm going to make it through this. You'll put your head down, you'll grit through it, you'll come out the other end, look back and say, how the hell did I pull that off? It's going to happen. It's going to be good. There'll also be times that you did something and you're just going to just bask in the glory of what you did. Look back at that, still learn from it. Nobody's perfect. Also, throughout your training, throughout the rest of your career, there are going to be roadblocks. There's going to be hurdles. It's okay to lean on each other. It's okay to ask for help. Fortunately, you have an entire residency, whatever your specialty is. 
with attendings who are there to help you. You don't have to take on all of the burden all of the time. Be the best you can be, but it's okay to ask for help. And then be there for those around you who need help as well. This will get you through. I'm sure you've all learned this over the last couple of years because more so than ever, we've had to rely on that. We are all on the same team with a very common goal, our patient. So always remember that the patient is the most important person in that equation. Not just your training in the residency, not just your co-residents, co-fellows, attendings. The patient is the most important. I know you've heard that today, but I'm going to throw it in anyways. Like I said, we're all on the same team. But when I say we, it is not just those of you sitting, or those of everyone sitting next to you. It's not just your co-residents, your co-fellows, your colleagues. It's everybody on the team. This includes nurses, medical assistants, physical therapists, pharmacists, doctors of podiatric medicine, in my case, ath athletic trainers, anybody working in the hospital, the people cleaning the rooms. I mean, there's no one person more important than another. You're all on the same team. Please treat everybody with respect. Acknowledge that they're all on the same team and learn from them. You will get so much information out of those around you who are not the physicians who are there supposed to be teaching you that will make you great. Like, you know, we talked, had a lot of stories earlier about different things in residency or in training and, and practice. The most training that I ever got on labor and delivery was from the nurses. Being awake all night long with the nurses, fo following along with labor, laboring patients, they will tr teach you more than you will learn from some of your attendings. Listen to what the attendings say. They're probably pretty smart, but you'll learn a ton from those nurses. So keep that in mind. Don't pretend or don't think that you're better than they are in, at any point. We're all on the same level, regardless of your degree. All right. One last point, I know we've heard this before. You guys have an incredible amount of tenacity. Call it, pick your word. I like tenacity, perseverance, resilience. It took a lot to get you through to achieve this kind of greatness to get through medical school. Please be proud of yourselves and everything that you have accomplished over the last four years. For some of us, it took longer. For fellows, we did an extra year. Congrats. Check your egos. Like we've heard before, Dr. Crone, it wasn't just us that got us through here. There is an incredible support system all around you that got you through. You did a lot of work, and I'm definitely not going to take that away from you. It was hard. You did it. And you had a lot of help. Please, please, please acknowledge those around you. We did a little bit earlier. Later today, tomorrow, for the rest of your lives, acknowledge those around you who have supported you. There's not, there's just no chance that I could have gotten through medical school without my parents' help, with my wife's support and help. And a lot of the people who are sitting here today. <laughs> I'm sad to see Dr. Pham's going, but he's one of them. Acknowledge those around you. It takes a team, it takes a village. As these new physicians walk into a difficult, tenuous time, those who have been supporting them, please continue to support them. There will be times where they fall. There will be times where they are hit with incredible amounts of moral injury. Help pull them up, help pick them up. It's never too far along in anybody's career to be there for these physicians. You've been there already. Keep being there. Help them get through it when it's difficult and just praise the heck out of anything they do that's great because there will be plenty of both. There will be days when you guys feel on top of the world. There will be days when you feel like you want to find a rock to crawl under. Kind of goes with training. Unfortunately, if, from my experience, it's not didn't go away after training. But you, gotta, you have a lot more of the... Uh, feelings of victory than you, you did early on. So make it through. You'll be awesome.
along those same lines, you're graduating from an incredible university. And I'm not just saying that because I graduated from the same university. All right, maybe a little bit. But Comp Northwest is great. You had an incredible support team here. You have incredible leaders, incredible faculty. Graduating right now does not mean that you don't have that anymore. As, you, as you've heard before, you're part of the family. We're all part of Dr. Crone's children. I haven't been invited to Thanksgiving yet, but we'll get there. But we're all part of the family. This university is here for you no matter when you need it. When you're out in practice for 20 years and you need something, they're still here for you. You're part of the family. As are all of us who have graduated prior. So when you graduate, remember where you're coming from. Remember your roots. Remember the university. Remember what you felt like as the very first day as a third year when you didn't even know where to go at 6 o'clock in the morning to meet up with whoever you were supposed to meet up with. Or first day of residency. When you have no clue what you're doing. Once you make it through, once you're going through your residency training, help the students. Lift them up. Help them become great. You will learn so much more by trying to teach those who are following in your footsteps than you will trying to learn it on your own. So please, please, please be a mentor, be a teacher, continue to learn, continue to grow. That will serve you very, very well. Okay. I think you've probably heard enough of me for one day. So let's complete the last step in your transition from student to physician. Please stand. All right. So now is the time for changing of the tassel, signifying the, trans the final transition to being a full physician. Please take your tassel from the right side of your hat and move it over to the left. Congratulations, you're no longer a student. Welcome to the Comp Northwest Alumni Association. Go be great. Thank you all. Please welcome Acting Dean of the College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific and Comp Northwest, Dr. David Conant. Thank you for the inspiring words, Dr. Gould. You can all be seated. Before I give you my prepared remarks for the Dean's Charge, I would like you to please acknowledge your Dean for the last four years, Provost Paula Crone. There were many people involved with the founding of this uh, campus in Comp Northwest, but I can assure you, if it wasn't for Provost Paula Crone, this would not exist. Thank you for all you do, Paul. Class of 2022, over the past four years, you've experienced unprecedented events no other medical student has ever had to endure. As you are ready to take the rite of passage into your third year of medical school, beginning your clinical education, a global, pande global pandemic relegated many of your coveted clinical rotations to an online virtual experience. The national lockdown created financial uncertainties, disruption of your education, and separation from your loved ones, with psychological implications secondary to virtual isolation, resulting in a significant toll on all of us. In addition, those of you up in the Comp Northwest, you had to also endure a 100-year fire displacing many students and their loved ones due to this tragedy. During these past four years, you have all developed a resiliency that will carry you through your career. 
Despite these overwhelming uncertainties during your training, you comported yourself with absolute professionalism, and I am proud to call every one of you my colleague in the next few minutes. Today is a transition from your many years of college and medical school training to your first job as a physician. Your residency training will continue to mold you as a physician to the specialty of your choice, and your residency will continue to be a significant time commitment. Medicine is a noble profession, and if I had it to do over again, I would do it again. But your practice of medicine can totally consume you if you let it. You will soon realize the most important commodity in your medical career is time. Once you realize this, you will begin to understand the importance of a work-life balance. This will be difficult or impossible in the beginning of the residency, but you must embrace the times you will have available for your personal life. Don't waste that time. Hug your wife, husband, partner, kids, your mom and dad, every free moment you can get. You will also come to realize that you will be studying medicine for the rest of your career. It does not stop with your residency, thus the term lifelong learning. You cannot postpone your need to establish a work-life balance. My charge to all of you is that all the many years of work to become a physician and the many hours ahead of training and studying is for your patients. But in order to be an effective physician for your patients, you must learn to take care of yourself first. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you, Dean. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the graduates of the class of 2022. Such a remarkable event. Congratulations again to each and every one of you. I confess I am deeply moved as I see so many of your family members and friends, loved ones gather here today to support you. During the presidential search process for me, one hugely appealing Western U characteristic was the tremendous sense of community. And you've heard it, the word family, familia, now, I'm Italian, so I, when I hear familia, you know, I don't want you to think it's mafia. I, I'm referring to an extended family. <laughs> During the, the, this time, and the founding president that you've heard over and over, Phil Pomeranz, created a great sense of welcome and warmth and family four decades ago, and that lives on today. A primary focus for me as the third president is to nurture that wonderful feeling of warmth, inclusivity, and in so doing, convey a sense of extended family as we just stated to everyone at Western U. Our Oregon and California campuses are more than just an elite graduate college of higher education, but really a second home in which all are treated with empathy, compassion, care, as, as that that should be for an accorded family member. That sense of family must endure as we grow and as we build upon this coveted legacy. I definitely ascribe to the philosophy of family and team effort, and we've heard that theme. Think of the extraordinary individual effort and sacrifice that each and every one of you has endured to arrive at this point, the sleep deprivation, the missed parties, the missed movies, and yet you did it, and you didn't do it alone. We each have those special someones who we can count on and who can count on us in challenging times. We are a guiding light for someone and a steadying hand when they stumble, a keeper of confidences in good times and bad, and someone may always be there for us. A team effort indeed. And we're blessed to be surrounded by those people who care for us, whose hands applaud our success, as you've heard today, and whose shoulders will comfort us in difficult times and those who have made sacrifices to ensure our success. Your years of study have included highs and lows, and your family and loved ones have been there, and your friends as well, to raise you up 
and those who support you, your choice, that's your team. Let us give credit to those loved ones today. I ask that your teams, whether husbands, wives, children, the significant others, friends, parents, grandparents, or special friends, please rise and please allow us the privilege to acknowledge and recognize you. It's exciting, more exciting than ever before. I see, honestly, I see limitless opportunities for you and your university and our university and campus here in Lebanon. I see endless opportunities in which we can serve our community right here in the Willamette Valley and here in Lebanon specifically. I see infinite opportunities in which we can expand the depth and breadth of our mission together. Countless opportunities await us. Most of all, I'm honored and privileged and humbled to be among you, the Western U extended family, and to be one of your colleagues and your servant leader. You are our new ambassadors and forever a member of this family. In my opinion, you're the bright beacon of light that represents the future of the university. All of you proudly carry the Western U flag those special and coveted characteristics that we, have, we so respect. Now you possess the skill to set and make a profound and meaningful difference in the world and positively impact the healthcare of our communities globally and also locally. In essence, you've accepted a higher calling, the care of the patient and to be delivered the care here in, or any other community which you enter. No value can be placed on your capacity and willingness to care and serve your patients. In the words of Francis of Assisi, when you leave this earth, you can take nothing that you have received, but only what you have given, a full heart enriched by honest service, love, sacrifice, and courage. Again, a hearty congratulations to the class of 2022, and with this, I declare these commencement exercises closed. Godspeed. Distinguished guests, this concludes our commencement ceremony. For those who are able, please stand and remain at your seats until the stage party, faculty, and graduates have exited the tent. For the safety of all, it is essential to keep the aisles clear during the recessional. Commencement assistants will inform you when it is clear for you to exit.
Thank you for attending Western U's College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific Northwest Commencement Ceremony. Please check your seat for all personal belongings and exit the tent. Commencement staff will be dropping off any personal items left behind to the front desk at Comp Northwest. Please check in with front reception if you are missing any items.